Hi everyone, good morning. Uh, it's still morning, yes. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> Sorry about that. Time gets away from you when you're having fun. Uh, this morning I made um, uh, a video uh, with that kaleidoscope thing. That was a lot of fun to do. I almost fell asleep doing it. And um, I'll be um, experimenting with that software a little bit more. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Because I think some people would enjoy something like that. You know, just to play it before you go to sleep, wind down, get relaxed, and then, you know, just have some zen time, right? So, I want to thank all my sponsors this month. This is May 2018. This is it. The website, my PayPal link. That's it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a transfer on this painting. Uh, this is really, it turned out beautiful. As you can see, some really beautiful cells. A little touch of green in there, a little more white at the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be putting this, but then uh, this way around, of course. But I'm going to be putting this Nautilus shell on top. And I don't know, but for viewers that have been with me for a long, long time, um, I've done one of these before where I did a really big shell on top. But because these cells are so beautiful, I thought I'd go just a little bit smaller to, you know, leave some room of the, the beautiful background. Because after I take off the paper, I'm going to um, add some really beautiful glaze layers with uh, mica. That's what we're going to do. So uh, what I'm putting on here is um, just gel. It's called gel medium. And that works really fine to uh, transport the, uh, the image from the paper to the canvas. So as you can see, I'm putting on an equal layer. And I know from last time that I have to really be careful that I get everything covered. Because where there's no gel, there's no transfer. So then you get all these little holes in the, uh, in the image. But that's okay too because it worked out pretty fine because it looked like some sort of a weathered, um, weathered image. And I sort of uh, liked it. The, the effect that it gave so uh, it's not too big so this will be done in a minute there we go now by now you will have seen my new intro video um, I asked a, a guy at work you know we have all those um, people that are really good with every sort of computer stuff so I asked someone at work I said can you make me an intro video and um, he said, oh, sure, I can do that. No problem at all. But uh, I had to make a logo to put in the video. And then I got, you know, pretty much caught up in the whole video thing myself. And I thought, well, you know, it's not too much work. I'll make one, make one on my own. So that's what I did. And that's what you saw at the beginning of the video. So that's it. That's pretty. There's a lot of gel on there. Okay, nicely covered, making sure that I got the uh, these bits too. Maybe a little bit more here on the edge. Okay, I think there's enough on here now. Now, to take the painting, and we're going to put it on a little bit like that. Pulling it aside a little bit because I like this the bit of white I like here the cells I like that green so we're gonna put it on like this and the good bit is we have some awesome weather again in Holland so I'm gonna be putting it outside first I'm gonna really make sure that it's uh, in contact with the uh, with the canvas see that we can do that like that Okie dokie. And 
and I just might, nah, maybe not. I was going to put one on top, but I don't think that's a good thing to do. But I am doing it along the sides because I'm pretty sure this is going to dry waterproof and then I can't get the paper off, so I shouldn't have done this at all. <coughs> That was kind of stupid. So I'll take that off. Okay, that's going to work. Just pressing it down just a little bit more. Okay, it's on there. I'm going to put it in the sun. I'm going to let it dry and then um, I'm going to get it back in. Then I'm going to take off the paper. I'll show you how I do that. And um, then I, I think I'll just finish off the whole painting and stick those videos together. So that's going to work just fine. So um, see you all back in the next part of this video. Later. Okay, guys, we're back. And um, I've had this out in the sun for quite a long time. So I just uh, wet the top of the uh, transfer. Now I'm taking off a little bit of the water because... Don't want it to be too wet. And what I'm doing is sort of rubbing to see if it'll come off. Yep, it will. And we can already see the transfer on the uh, on the canvas. A little bit more. I think um, if you're doing this at home, I would. Um, you know, just let this paper uh, soak up that moisture just a little bit more before you start. But because I'm going to video this, I thought I'd just do it right now. And slowly, steadily take off the top layer of paper. Now, a lot of people are going to be asking, you know, what kind of um, printer, what kind of paper. I don't get these effects. I don't know how you get different effects than I do. Well, I think every kind of printer is different. And this one is a laser printer. I've never tried this with a inkjet, but we will pretty soon. I promise. Um, this is um, the last video I'm doing today, but tomorrow I will have an inkjet printer uh, image ready. And we will put that on and see what happens. Because I know a lot of people are wondering, you know, where they're going to get those, uh, a print like this on a, on a laser jet. Because usually it's companies that have the laser jet printers. And I know that you don't want to, you know, be going to some company asking if they can print you a <laughs> an image. So uh, that's uh, something that I'm uh, pretty much curious about too if we can do this with an inkjet of a yeah an inkjet printer so the paper i'm using that is just normal printer paper as cheap as you can get and the medium i use to transfer the image with that is just a normal gel medium uh, works fine as you can see you do have to scratch it a little because you do want to get those uh, the fibers off and this is where I went over it with um, where I put the gel on top that I thought oh let's take it off because that's not, never gonna be uh, never gonna let go because it's gonna be waterproof so I took it off in time a little bit more it's drying up here Making sure I get all the little bits off. Getting the top layer here off. I think it's a perfect size, especially if you, you know, you're um, pretty much satisfied with the background. You don't want to have too much of a transfer all over it. Sometimes it can be nice, but other times you know you do want to see a little bit of the background because you know it's that's really what it's all about that 
that's that. And now I'm going to drop this on in the bin. I was going to say on the, on the ground, and I was going to do that on the ground, but why not straight in the bin, right? Now I'm using this part of the sponge, which is pretty uh, corrosive. But as you can see, it's staying on there perfectly. And that's what you really want. I think this one is even a better job than that last one I did. See that? That is beautiful. Just taking off a little bit more. There it is. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over it with a, um, a glaze with mica. And uh, a glaze is something that um, is a sort of a medium to put the mica in. But on the same time, it's going to be transparent. So you'll see the pour in the background and you'll absolutely still see the transfer. So that's going to be really pretty. Let's see if I got it all off. It feels really good. But what I am going to do before I start painting is with a with a black marker I'm going to fill in and darken the side here and the top bit here. I'm going to darken that just a little bit to make it a little bit more defined. And um, that's going to be it. So I'm going to stop this video right now, put it back in the sun, then come back, do a little marker work and then do the glaze. So I'll be right back. See you in a bit. Okay guys, we're back. What I have done is taken off uh, total the, the total top. I have um, used a this sort of a marker. It is um, I don't know what you call it, but in, no, I used this one, but I'm not sure if it's waterproof, but we'll see. We'll see soon enough. And right now I am going to mix up some colors to glaze it with. And I need to screw off this, yes, the top. Okay, a little bit of medium. And I'm going to start with um, Guatemala Green. This is from Primary Elements. This is uh, from www colorart.com and it's uh, American based so all you guys that live in America you can buy that there without too much without too much uh, shipping costs as you can see um, you see right through it and that, that is what I was going for because I want to put a little layer on there just, you know, that it's going to make it look, really look like a shell. Then down here a little bit. And as you can see, I am putting it on with my finger to um, sort of blend it into the background. A little bit more color in the middle and then less color when you go, when you make it bigger. That's the way it works. Put that color away. Now I'd like uh, a little bit of that to pick up that green that is in the background. That's important too that you look at what you have in your background and then put colors on there that will uh, sort of lighten it up or pick it up, whatever you want to call it. See how I'm mixing this up and it is exactly the same color as the green in the background. Let me put on the uh, the top so I can tell you what it is. It's Kiwi. There you go. That's how you spell color art. Kiwi color. That's it. Primary elements. And there you see on the bottom it says Art Pigments by Color Art. Let's see if I can get you really in focus. There you go. Okay, now back to the uh, to the painting. See, on this side, I want to uh, get a little bit of that green picking up, and that's doing it perfectly, as you can see. And overall, you will not really be noticing this at all. Only when the the light hits it a little bit, because it's uh, 
uh, art pigments with a lot of mica. But you still want to see through it and see the background, the pore. That is the, uh, the whole thing. The whole purpose. Now, as you can see, it's pretty see-through. And what I'm uh, mixing it with is this. This is the polyurethane gloss varnish. So once we're, I'm finished with this, I'm going to varnish it completely to make it really nice and shiny so that it looks like really like a wet, wet shell. That's something I'm looking forward to. And a little bit inside here. That's it. Cleaning off that one. And I'm going to come in with some blue. But first I want to mix a little with the green with the Guatemala. And that's the good thing about these pigments. They are mixable. You can mix them up if you, if you really want. So this is going to be coming up here. And spreading it down a little because we still want to see the background and that is something that I think is important so that the uh, whole painting sort of sinks into the background but I also think that it's important that it has this beautiful little glaze on top that's it okay now for blue I'm gonna pick some really nice blue and blue by you that is one of my favorite colors and that's what we're going to use oops there's a little bit of gold in there we don't want that although this one could use a little bit of gold but i won't new no. just a tiny little bit of bayou blue and you don't need much you just you know dip your brush as i did see that dip the brush in and then you have a beautiful blue color as you can see so this i'm going to do around the sides and then blend it in with my finger because this is the darker color and what i like is that it's sort of um it's a shadow and it'll sort of make it look more three-dimensional if you know what i mean only you guys won't be able to pick this up, not not as it is in real life, because, well, sometimes the uh, video doesn't do that. But there's a sort of a, a nice sort of a bleed in these colors. That's looking really, really beautiful. Now it really looks like it's on the bottom of the ocean. And a little down here, just to make this pop more. There you go. Wow, that's looking really pretty. A little bit here in the middle. And I don't know if you can really, yeah, you can look at that, how shiny it is. That's going to stay like that because that's, what this stuff does just a little bit more around the side just to make it just a little bit more popping popping off the background okay that's cool Okay, I think I'm there. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to make it totally, totally um, opaque. Like now we have, see how it shines and it's really like a shell? That's what you're going for. You don't really want to overdo it. You still want to see the background. And as you see right now, you can still see it. It even picks up the colors a little bit more. So this whole transfer sort of comes to life. I see one little bit that I'm not satisfied with. That's up here. We want that a little bit darker. That's nice. Now, I think it is missing one thing, and that is a little bit of purple, because 
Um, purple sort of picks picks up um, all these colors and makes it look more like mother of pearl, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to do a little bit of purple. See, I just dip in the brush with a tiny little bit and then I put it in the, uh, the medium. And it really soaks up these pigments really fast, the polyurethane. Okay, so I'm going to just give this here a little bit and a little bit there. Just a little bit of purple. And maybe here. A tiny little bit to make it just a little bit more playful. Now it really looks cool. That is cool. You know, you don't really see the purple that much because it sort of blends in with the blues and the greens. But I can see that it's giving just that little bit of a different look to it. And that's what I was sort of going for. Don't want to really have that much purple, but see that? Wow. That's pretty. Okay, we'll put the caps back on that. Oh yeah, you want to know the color purple I used? Uh, this one, Snapdragon. A little bit more here, around the side. That's looking cool. Okay, what other colors do I have? I do have another color which I really like. And it's called um, uh, Coral, something Coral Coral color. Yeah, that's this one. But I'm a bit hesitant to use this one because it's pretty bright. But let's see what it does. I can always wipe it off, no problem at all. Let me clean the brush. Okay, clean brush. A little bit of polyurethane. And a little bit of that stuff in there. I'm not going to put it straight on. I'm just going to see if it if it is something that might pick it up more. See this color? This is a coral color. And I'm already thinking maybe not. Let's see. No. It it's not that it really adds to uh the painting. It just does give it a little bit more depth. But it's not really on there because, um, well, if you really want the color to um, really pop, you need a little bit more. But this is really enough because it gives the illusion of a little bit more depth. Okay, I'm going to let this uh, dry. And then I'm going to do the first layer of varnish. And I'll show you that too. So first off drying, then varnishing. Hey guys, love you all to pieces. See you later. Okay, we're back and we're ready to uh, put some nice shiny varnish on top of this. So what I like to do is use one of these. Like some of the uh, people uh, on YouTube that comment said, that's uh, kind of smart because I never can get enough on there before it starts to go tacky. But with this, it surely helps. So I just put it on the canvas and then I go over it like this to make sure my brush is nice and soaked with the, uh, with the varnish. And then I just pull it, level it out, make sure I go all ways, you know, crisscross, left, right, up, down, like that that it's fully covered. That's it. Now I do the sides because then uh, the middle, of the, this all has time to level out. I am going to do a little bit more. Oops, sorry, hit the microphone there. So that's one. Go over. 
over it again put it on the sides and I'm just doing the, the first base coat because that's important for me you know to have it all in place everything ready then I'm going to sign it and then I'm going to build up the uh, the layers of varnish and like most of you know I do a couple of layers one more over here nice and smooth this side that's it it'll uh, pretty much make sure that everything is sort of I do add some if, if I think there's not enough on there to level out so just one more That's enough to level out. But remember, even though you see a couple of um, light strokes, you won't see them later because this also sort of levels out totally. So there we go. That's pretty much it. And now we're going to leave it to dry. As you can see, it's a little bit milky, but that's going to be uh, totally uh, transparent by the time it's dry. So we'll just leave it like that, clean off the brush. I do see uh, a little bit of, um, how do you call it, a little bit of structure here and there, because that's the under the gel medium that was under the, uh, under the transfer. But as we know, this is art, so a couple of bumpy things here and there, that's okay. As long as you um, totally varnish it, that it's nice and smooth, and it's all covered, then that's okay. Don't worry about that. Okay, guys, this was it. I'm going to stick all these videos together, and then you can uh, see how this uh, came to be, right? Okay, we've got to say goodbye today, and see you all back tomorrow. Wishing you all a really beautiful Saturday. Have some fun with the family. And I will see you tomorrow. Thanks all for watching. Love you all to pieces. Liebe euch alle. Hoffe jullie allemaal. Bye bye.